Hallelujah. And right now, I 
am presenting a clarion call to every single man, to every single woman, to every single five-fold ministry gift. I'm calling out every apostle, every pastor, every evangelist, every teacher, every prophet of God. I'm calling you out right now as a clarion call to say it's time to sound the alarm. Hallelujah. I'm talking to every lay leader right now in the name of Jesus that I'm saying that right now you need to sound the alarm. I'm talking to every deacon that's in the church right now that it is time to sound the alarm. I'm talking to every apostolic ambassador today that it's time for you to sound the alarm. If you're a youth pastor, if you're a youth leader, my wife earlier was just talking about that God said to pray for our children. I'm here today to tell you that it's time to sound the alarm. Every children's pastor, listen, I'm coming down your row one way or another. Every children's pastor, every worship leader, it's time to sound the alarm. Every believer that's under the sound of my voice, I am doing a clarion call today to tell you that it's time to sound the alarm. Hallelujah. It's time to sound the alarm. We need the sound of revival to hit this land. We need the sound of revival to hit this nation. It's time for revival to hit your homes right there where you are. It's time to sound the alarm of revival. I'm here to prof prophetically declare to you today that revival is about to hit your home, that revival is about to hit your school, that revival is about to hit your church, revival is about to hit this land, it's about to hit this city, it's about to hit this country, it's about to hit you personally in your life. Revival is coming about right now in the name of Jesus. Some of you need a special touch from the master's hand and God is saying he's about to revive you. Some of you feel like that you've been down and out and seem like that the enemy has got you bound up but I'm here to tell you today that revival is about to hit you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm here today to declare to you and give an clarion call to say it's time to sound the alarm. My God, come on. It's time to sound the alarm. It's time for you to pick up where you left off. It's time for you to pick up. You may feel like that you've been down and out. It seems like that nothing seems to be going your way. But today, I'm declaring to you today, it's time to sound the alarm. It's time for revival to come about this nation. It's time for revival to hit exactly where you are. It's time for God to touch people, touch you in a very special way. And when revival hits you, you can say that there's no devil in hell that's on one to stop me, that there's no devil in hell that's going to block me. I can climb over a troop and I can leap over a wall and I'm here to, today to tell you that it's time for revival. My God, come on. It's time for revival. It's time for the church to wake up. It's time for the sleeping giant to wake up. Don't you realize that we are, as Christian believers, one of the most powerful people work walking on this side of heaven. God has given us the power. God has given us the truth in his power. He said, greater works shall you do than what Jesus did. You have to be able to pick up yourself, my brother. You got to pick up yourself, my sister, and say that I can't stay in Lodomar. Yes, come on. I can't stay in a place where God does not communicate to me. I can't stay in a place where there's no, no communication with God. I can't stay in a place that's low. I can't stay in a place where it's dusty. I got to go to a place where there's uh, fruitfulness. I got to go to a place where there's pastures. The Bible says that the Lord shall lead you into green pastures. You can't stay in that low place. That You have to come out of that lowly place. And God is saying that it's time to sound the alarm and time for revival to kick in. It's time 
for revival to hit your homes. It's time for revival to hit your schools. It's time for revival. It's time for something to come over you supernaturally to say that I, I, I can't stay right here. Some, God has to move in uh, my situation. God has to move in my circumstance. God has to move in this nation. It has to hit my city. It has to hit my country. It has to hit my town. It has to hit the place that I'm at. It has to hit the country that I'm in. It has to hit the Holy Ghost and the fire has to hit right now in the name of Jesus. I can't stay the same because something that's stirring up on the inside of me, the Bible says that stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. And right now, I'm making a clarion call to every single person today to say revival is about to hit right there where you are. You have a worrisome child. You have somebody that seems like that your spouse may or their significant other may seem like that they're not with you, that they're not for you, or it seems like that you're at odds at one another. But I challenge you today to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I challenge you today to begin to pray in the Spirit that that wayward child will come back to the knowledge, saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you pray in the Spirit that that husband that seems like they may have looking to walk out on you, that that husband will come back home and say, hey, listen, I apologize, honey, and I want our marriage to work. I'm sounding the alarm today for you to get on your knees and pray. I'm sounding the alarm today to say that you're calling your wife back. It seems like that she's homemongering out in the streets of today. Get on your knees, man of God, and say, I want my wife back. I want every single thing that the enemy has tried to steal from me. I want it all back. You need to put it in the comment section and say, I want it all back. I want my children back. I want my wife back. I want my job back. I want the money back that was stolen from me years ago. I want that thing back. I want my child back. I want my healing back. I'm here to declare to you today, time to get on your knees and pray and ask God, please, God, help me in this situation. Help me in my circumstance. It's time to sound the alarm. Yeah. Revival. 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 See, when we talk about revival, we only think about revival when it comes down to going to church and thinking about that, you know, we're getting ready to have revival services. No, that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about three, uh, 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 three Tuesdays out of a month that we're going to have revival service. Three services out of a week. Uh, we want to take the weekend and have a guest speaker to come about and be, and be able to uh, preach uh, some faulty gospel. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about revival that's hitting this nation that when you walk down the street uh, that people say there's something different about you. There's something that's on the inside of you that I need and it's the Holy Ghost and power that, that revival Revival, a revival needs to be able to speak, needs to be able to come about. You heard my wife uh, uh, say to me just not too long ago that the fire will never burn out. And that's what I'm saying to you today, that I really believe that there's some people that's watching me right now that you're allowing your fire to burn out. You're allowing the fire of God to burn out. You're allowing uh, that thing to, to smother you. You allow that little, that little something about your relative, something about a brother, something about a cousin, something about your mother. You allow, you allow that little thing to smother and take your light out. Yeah. Don't you think that the enemy wants to smother you? Wants to the fire out of your life. And I'm here to decree unto you today that the fire of God 
shall never burn out of you. I want to be able to point out a few things about revival, revival that has hit right here in America. And I'm believing that God is right now is preparing us for this last end time revival. There's something that's going to hit this nation. There's something that's going to hit this world. There's something that's going to hit right there where you are that's going to spread about that you talk about. It's going on for weeks. It's going to go on for months. They're going to say, what's happening over there uh, at One Touch Ministries? They're saying like they can't allow the fire to get out. They're having services every single day. There's signs, miracles, and wonders that's coming about right there in that ministry. I'm here to declare to the people of God today that there's a clarion call going out right now. I'm sounding an alarm to the nations that say it's time for revival. Yes, sir. Revival, revival. The first of uh, the first awakening happened in America was back in 1730 through 1740. It was a 10-year revival. It started in Georgia and it shot up. Through Massachusetts, the people were convinced of their sins. They, they were convicted of their sins, and they began to renew themselves in Jesus Christ. Because only a one message, one preacher, by the name of Jonathan Edwards, that preached the gospel that said nothing but sinners in the hand of an angry God. That message began to pour out. That message began to go out throughout those states and throughout those cities and throughout the uh, United States of America. He sounded an alarm where even the non-believers started getting baptized for they didn't want to fall into the hands of an angry God. Yes. Revival, revival needs to hit this nation again. Then we have the second great awakening that started in 1820 through 1850. 30 years of revival that hit this nation. Some of these um, revivals you may have never heard of, but it's this one started right here in America and it spread it all the way to England. This was, they call this the second great awakening. It was, it was just, just like the first started. It started out in the church and then it started to hit everyone that caused large tent revivals to start. And it went, and it went on for weeks and sometimes months at a time. And preachers all around the nation would begin to preach the word of God and preach repentance and we preach that you got to be filled with fire and they began to preach the true unadulterated word of God and altars begin to open up. That's when you begin to see people coming down front of the church yes. getting down on their knees and professing the name of Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior and those who are already saved, they renew their faith and their trust in the word of God by kneeling down in front of the altar. That man that started that great revival was his name was Charles Finley. He sounded the alarm. Yes. Come on now. He sounded the alarm for revival in this great nation. You may have heard about the third great awakening that started in 1875 through 1885 and that one started in Chicago. So I don't know if my cousin Apostle Taylor is listening right now, but I'm here to tell you that there is a revival that's starting out and can, that has started out and can start out right there in the city of Chicago, my brother. And that revival started with a man by the name of D.L. Moody. You may have heard of Moody Bible Institute. You may have heard of some of the great things that this mighty man of God started. Uh, how his ministry started is that he was doing Bible study on the streets of Chicago. And he was doing Bible study with children 
back in 1850, and it grew into great numbers that even the president-elect Abraham Lincoln attended to see for himself. Revival started in the city of Chicago. Moody uh, became one of the preachers that did stuff that was abnormal. He did things that, that the regular church people, uh, they didn't do. So uh, he was the first person that actually said, Jesus wants you the way that you are and come to him now because he's coming back. So he started, that was the first person that started saying, listen, you ain't got to come to church dressed up. You can come to church dressed down. You can put on your sneaks, put on your kicks, put on your joggers and your pants and your sweatpants, whatever it is that you want to wear to church. As long as you accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your hearts as your Lord and your personal Savior, yes. come to Jesus just as you are. I believe that God don't care what you look like because he hung out in the streets with the prostitutes. He hung out in the streets with the people who really didn't seem like that. They were church people. They didn't always look the part. They didn't always act the part. They didn't always uh, seem like they were in the right position. We always want to take care of people and have church, people in our church that know how to act like how to be in church. We want people in our churches that's not going to run amok. Uh, but then I'm here to tell you that Jesus dwelt among the people that ran amok yes. in the church. And you as the leader, you as the pastor, you as the apostle, you have to go along and clean them up. You say, I don't want people to clean up, but guess what? That's what God is calling you to do. Yes, come on. You got to clean up these people that have been living in a world. She called Obasita Alabasa. You have to you have to clean up these people that have been living 20 and 30 years in sin and you expect for them to come out of something that they've known how to do for the past 20, 30, 40 years of their life. Do you understand that there's a paradigm shift that has to happen when you've been living a certain way for so long and there are certain things that there's boundaries, there's things that they have built up on the inside of them. There's insecurities that built up on the inside of them. There's mental blocks that they have done because they've been hurt, because they've been abused, because they've been molested, because they've been raped. And then you come in here and you spend two weeks with them and you want them to be perfect. No pastor, no bishop, no apostle. You got to work come on now. with them in their salvation. You got to clean them up. You have to be the fisher of men. Yes. I'm here today to declare, to declare to you that I'm sounding the alarm. D.L. Moody, he sounded the alarm, said, listen, come to church exactly the way that you are. Come off the streets exactly the way you are. You ain't got to put on your prettiest dress. You ain't got to put on your three-piece suit. Just come into the house of the Lord with your short storm. Come into the house of the Lord with your uh, tattoos. Come into the house of the Lord with all of your piercings. Come into the house of the Lord exactly the way that you are. God is calling you right now to sound the alarm. Hallelujah. He's calling you to sound the alarm. The Bible, not the Bible, uh, if you want to hear about one more great revival, let's talk about the Azusa Street Revival that started in Los Angeles in a church on 312th Street. This revival started in 1906 through 1915. Let's talk. This revival right here is sparked what we know today as the Pentecostal movement. Yes. 
It was built on the holiness movement. It was built around holiness. It was built around uh, sanctification. It, it, re it actually reintroduced the church to the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And what happened was uh, on April the 9th, 1906, the Spirit of God fell down on several people and they began to speak in tongues. The people, they called it the second blessing or sometimes the third work of grace. The first being salvation and the second being sanctification. This revival helped start where uh, this revival helped start where men and women and boys and girls and white people and black people and people of all different kind of nations will come together and worship. It wouldn't be no segregation no more. They will all come together and worship unto our God under one roof. This man that started this revival was actually a black man that was blind in one eye. His name was William J. Seymour. He sounded the alarm and helped establish this Pentecostal movement. He helped to usher and bring back into focus the gift of the Holy Spirit in, the, in, a, unique, uh, in a unique place that allow uh, people to see that God was the institution of our world. Yes. Do you recognize that, I don't know if you realize or recognize, but America was actually built off of Christian values. Jesus. He had to bring back to focus that this nation that we're living in was based upon Christian beliefs. This was, again, a well-known fact about Seymour, and he was preaching. Now, I, I, this right here should encourage somebody. Seymour, how this revival started was that he was actually preaching at a church that he was looking to pastor, and he preached the word of God. And what happened is that uh, after the first service was over, they kicked him out of the church and locked the doors and told him he couldn't come back in. My God. And he began to pray. He began to seek the face of God. And next thing you know, that the Spirit of God began to pour out on the streets and people began to give their life to the Lord. To the fact that it happened so much that a Methodist church opened their doors on Azusa Street and they began to hold meetings daily for three Year straight revival hit. And I'm here to tell you today that revival can hit right there where you are. Yes, come on, come on. Another, I, I'm, I'm just giving you some other revivals that you may have heard of, may not heard of. The 20th century revival that started in 1910 through 1970, 60 years. This swept all across America. It started in New York. It, it went from all the way from New York all the way to Los Angeles, California. You may have heard a man by the name of Billy Sunday. He was a professional baseball player that became a preacher. He sounded the alarm to the masses and began to preach to millions under a tent for months at a time until his death. And then enters a man that I know everybody probably have heard by the name of Billy Graham. Billy Graham began to host crusades and he hosted over 400 crusades in 185 countries in large arenas. He began to broadcast those crusades on television. Evangelist Billy Graham designed the church to say, listen, we need to build strong disciples. We have to build up people and that's the problem with the church right now is that we don't want to build people. We want them to come to church, hang out, hear two songs, and come hear you preach, give an offering, and give a big offering if you can. Listen, don't, don't give a little small offering. Don't give a little this, a little that. No, 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 no. They want you to give big offerings. And so Billy Graham 
he started, listen, we need to start discipling these people. Some other revivals that you may have heard is the Brownsville Revival. It started right here in Pentecost and, and, uh, and, and Pensacola, Florida, which reached 100,000 100, of people to uh, bring their life back to Jesus Christ. You may have heard of college revivals that have swept across this nation and thousands of people began to give their life to the Lord. You may have heard of uh, the Promise Keepers uh, revival. The Promise Keepers revival is the most publicized uh, revival that we have and it started in the 1900s. It actually began in 1991. And it began with 42,000 men um, that they, they decided to go across universities to lift up people in their faith. And then in 1993, uh, 50,000 men assembled in every state under 16 nations. In the following years, they began to do stadiums and cities. The revival. Uh, and so what happened is that in October of 1997, which was the year I graduated, I was actually trying to go to this, they did the Million Man March on the, uh, on the nation's mall in Washington, D.C. Hundreds and thousands of people gave their life to the Lord. The Promise Keepers reported that five million people had attended and men began to give their life to God. So I need you to come up here for a second, man. I'm saying all this because there's a reason why I'm saying all this. That revival have to hit our nation. You don't know what the next great revival is going to be. You don't know how things are going to come about. You don't know how God is going to move. And so Stand right here, honey. Yes. I'm here to, so I gave my word to my wife this morning. <laughs> I told her, I said, honey, I said that God has called you to be a revivalist. That you're going to hit people, you're going to hit nations and cause people to give their life to the Lord. To cause people to realize that they need to have the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And you're going to preach the unadulterated word of God. Be able to touch nations, touch worlds. The word of the Lord was to say to you that you don't know where or how this movement is going to start. You continue to do those prophetic lives on Tuesdays and Fridays because I saw where people are going to begin to share and share and share those lives of people and lives are going to be touched and changed and transformed. And you may say, well, I only see five people. I only see ten people. I only see these many people that's coming on the lives. But there's going to come a break where something's going to happen, where there's going to be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people that are going to say, who is this woman of God? Who is this woman? I have to get to see who this woman of God is. And I just heard this in the Spirit. He said, you will know if it's a scam or not. Don't worry about that. But still minister to them people. Still minister to them people. Because they're coming from the north, from the south, from the east, yeah. and the west. That people are going to hear the sound that's going to come out. Don't know how it's going to be. The reason why I say that is because you never know how it's going to hit. But it could be that very thing that goes viral. Not that you're trying to become famous or anything of that nature. But you actually want people to know that Jesus Christ is real. Amen. That he is the King of Kings and He is the Lord of Lords. And so I prophesy and I speak this to you today that you'll be known as one of those people 
that started revival. Rather it's on social media, not or rather it's people, but people shall hear the name of Young. Thank you, Lord. And they're going to call, they're going to say, who is this woman of God that speaks the oracles of God? In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for doing it. Jesus Christ, mighty name, amen. Just, just keep that ready because I'm, I'm going to do these last little things and then we're going to get up out of here. In all revivals, here are some ingredients. Here are some key things that I noticed that surrounded around revivals. Yes, sir. Some of these great revivals. Some of the revivals that you have not even heard of, haven't even seen of. of revivals. Number one, it has to be timing. Yes. It has to be the right timing. Revival uh, emerges during times of spiritual and moral decline, yes. which leads to intense prayer. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why I said it's time for revival. Yes. Look at our country, look at our nation right now. The moral decline is at an absolute low. And it is causing people right now to say, it's time to get on your knees and pray. It's all about the time. Prayer. God puts a long, uh, God puts a longing in the hearts of people to pray for revival. So I'm here to declare today that you begin to pray for revival. Number three, the word of God becomes precious. Yeah, the word of God becomes precious. You begin to preach the word of God. And it brings about a deep, deep conviction and a desire to know who Christ really is. And then number four, the Holy Spirit, it takes people uh, to be come into the tune with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number five, there's conviction yes. that comes about. Yes. The, uh, there's conviction the, that sinners, every single person that you come in contact with, they, they feel convicted of their sins and they accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Number six, we give glory to God. God receives praise yes. for every single thing that has been done because during revival, there are signs, miracles, and wonders that come about. There's a reformation and renewal in people. We revival. There's a long lasting effect that happens and then new ministries and new churches begin to form. Yes. There's a reformation that comes about and many people are being converted and the reason why there's different ministries that come about is for the simple fact is that uh, the churches can't hold them all. Uh -huh. come on. They need these pastors. They need leaders. There's manifestations that comes about groanings and things that of oh God, that, uh, healings that come about. The other thing that I found out about revival, yes. a lot of times it gets really messy. Yes, come on, come on. Things get really messy. So while you're praying about revival, while you're praying and saying, God, send revival, remember that revivals sometimes can become messy because signs, miracles, wonders come about. So now people are like, did that really happen? Did that really, was that a setup? Mm -hmm. All this other kind of stuff. Did God, did she really hear from God? Mm -hmm. Did he really hear from God? Was, was that right? Jesus. So there, there's things that come about when something new is happening. And revival sometimes has cycles. And so you will see the burning desire. You will see people and these things will happen over and over and over again. Like like you like I said before, is that uh, people, these things that just happen that we just have the three church revival. No, the revivals continue. 
Yeah. So on today, I'm here to tell you that I'm here to incite a riot. Hallelujah. I'm here to incite a riot. I'm here to declare a clarion call today that it's time for revival to hit our nation, to hit our world, to hit right now in the name of Jesus. Look at the things that we talked about, that there's moral decline that's happening in our nation right now. There's certain things that's going on right now, and it's time to sound the alarm. Come on, get that track up a little bit more for me, honey. Hallelujah, it's time to sound the alarm. It's time for God to sweep this nation. It's time for God to be able to come through and say that I am the King of Kings and I am the Lord of Lords and that God wants to be able to take over my life and I allow God to take over my life in the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. You need to type in the comments right now that I need revival. I need God to do something for me right now in the name of Jesus. Sweep this nation right now in the name of Jesus. God is calling the church right now to wake up. Wake up, oh sleeping giant. Wake up, oh sleeping giant. Wake up, oh sleeping giant. You got to come out of those slumps right now. In the name of Jesus. Wake up, oh sleeping giant. Open up your eyes. Become a slut, some of you. Got your eyes closed. And you're walking around like you can't see. You're walking around like you're blind. But you're not blind. You are a sleeping giant. Wake up, you sleeping giant. Open up your eyes in the name of Jesus. Smell the coffee in the name of Jesus. Wake up, church, in the name of Jesus. Wake up to the fact that you're no longer a child. Wake up to the fact that you're no longer a child. Wake up to the fact that you're no longer being abused. Wake up to the fact that you no longer have chains on you. Wake up to the fact that there is a presence of God. Wake up to the fact that you're the carrier of an almighty God. Wake up to the fact that you're no longer a slave to sin. Wake up to the fact that you're no longer attached to Jezebel. Wake up to the fact that you have a mindset of Christ. Wake up to the fact that you are endowed. That you're endured with the presence of an almighty God. Wake up to the fact that you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Wake up to the fact that you have power from on high. Wake up to the fact that you have dunamis power. You got power to walk right. You got power to live right. You got power to live right. You got Holy Ghost power. You got healing power. You got cancer canceling power. You got miracle working power. You got death destroying power. You got demon destroying power. You casting out every single devil power. You got power over depression. You got power over anxiety. You got eradicating power. Wake up, church. Wake up in the name of Jesus. Wake up right now. I want you to realize that you're free. That you're free. You're a free person. That there is no bondage. That there is no chains. Then have you about. Wake up right now that you have no guilty. That you're not guilty in the name of Jesus. Wake up to the fact that you have no shame. Wake up to the fact that there is no sin in your life. All my sins have been erased. That there is no more bondage. That Jesus is in your heart. That Jesus is in your mind. That Jesus is in your spirit. That there is a sound that needs to go out right now. In the name of Jesus, there's nothing hold you back. Don't throw in the towel. Don't walk out. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I didn't tell you to tap somebody, but I need you to put in the comment section. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to get tired. I may 
crying out. I might just have to let the weeping out. But I know that God catches every tear that falls from my eye. And I thank you, Lord, that you catch every single tear. Because every single tear that I shed, you promised God that I will get paid for every single tear that I cried. Thank you, Lord, for every single tear. Thank you, God, that you're to me right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to get back every single thing. I'm going to get back every single thing that the enemy stole from me. I'm going to get it back for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down the strongholds. I want to pull down every stronghold. I want to pull down I'm going to pull down every frustration, everything that tries to hold me back. I'm going to pull it down. I'm not going to... I'm not going to let this stop me. I'm not going to let this block me. I want you to get in my way. Move out of my way. Because I might come and kick. I'm coming in kicking and screaming. I'm coming in in the name of Jesus. I want to let the devil know that I'm I want the devil to know that I'm right here, I'm ready for it. Hallelujah. Because I got on the full armor of God. And God said that he's going to divert every single distraction. That he's going to divert every single thing that comes to distract me. It's going away right now in the name of Jesus. Every single fiery dart of the devil. God said that he's got me protected. He got me I wish that I could run all over this place huh, and just tell the Lord thank you. Huh. I wish that I could run all over this place huh, and tell God thank you. Huh, to let God know that I appreciate him. Let God know that I serve him huh, until the day that I die. Huh. I wish I could run all over this place and tell God huh, that I'm not going to lose my faith. Huh, that I'm not going to lose then I'm not going to Hallelujah Hallelujah I'll come here to sound the alarm Sound the alarm From God's most holy mountain To let you know that Jesus is coming back He's coming back Like a thief in the night He's coming back For a church Without spot or wrinkle He's coming back For his children And I don't know about you But I'm one of his children I don't know about you But I'm one of his servants I don't know about you But I'm so glad That Jesus I don't know about you But I'm so glad that Jesus died for me over 2,000 years ago. They hung in high. They stretched him wide. And for me, he bled and died. That's love, y'all. God didn't have to do it, but he did it just for me. I don't know about you, but he died just for Shannon E. Young. He died just for me because I was on my way to a burning hell. But Jesus said, no sir, not my boy Shannon, not my boy Shannon, not Shannon the man. He can't go to hell. He can't go there. There's no place for him in there. There's no place for him in hell. There's no love there. There's no presence there. There's no bot there. There's only sickness and disease. Hurt and loneliness. Hell is a place where their people are being tormented. Every day and night. I'm here to sound the alarm to let you know that you don't want to go to hell. That you don't want to find yourself right there in the enemy's camp. You don't want to be there to be tortured day in and day out. The day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is at hand. And I'm here to sound the alarm today to tell you that you need to get right with God. That you need to get right with His presence. That you need to tell God that I'm here to serve you until the day that I die. You need to share this message with everyone 
this is the month pastor is doing a series about sound the alarm. It is time for us to sound the alarm. This is also our, our time to realize the alarm is sounding and for us to be obedient. This is an obedient call. We know it sounds the alarm, but this is also an obedient call. This is a time to be obedient in this hour. God is calling for us to be obedient in this hour. For some of you who are watching, and you are in need of God to move in your life, you're in need of God to open up doors, you're in need of God to change some things in your life, you are in need of God even the more right now.
You can't mess with when she wash your people. What? You get delivered today. God said you got to connect with people that know how to pray. You got to connect with people that don't mind praying with you. That don't mind pouring into you. That don't mind giving you a scripture and telling you, listen, I'm going to put you on an assignment. You got to read that word and then you got to give me a revelation from the word. You got to go and connect with people that will challenge you to stay delivered and healed. Can be 
greater if we would be obedient. That's right. And I must say, Pastor Shannon, ever since I jumped on the bandwagon to be a part of One Touch Ministries and to allow you to be my leader and to lead and pastor me, because my husband pastors me. He pastors me. He had a pastor moment with me yesterday. Even though he's my husband, but he pastors me. Yes. He has to tell me when I'm wrong, and he has to tell me when I'm right. Most of the time, he likes to tell me when I'm wrong. He likes to tell me I'm right. But I praise God. It is difficult sometimes because we're husband and wife, so we're leadership and partnership. We got it all together. We got to communicate. Sometimes we got to talk a little rough. Yes. No, I'm, come on. We being honest. Yeah. Pastor, stand with me. Come on, Pastor, stand with me. Don't, don't leave me out here hanging. <laughs> I don't want the people to think that I, I ain't telling the truth. No, I ain't telling the truth, baby. <laughs> we, have to, we have to sometimes raise our voice a little bit yes. to get the point across. But then we have to bring it down to be a blessing to each other yes. and to encourage one another. Okay. I'm more of the fuster in the household. <laughs> but I fuss. But he's the more anointed, annoying, annoying. I was trying to say anointed, but the most annoying one in the house. I'm very annoying. Very annoying. <laughs> very, very, very annoying. He pushes all my buttons. He likes to see me fuss, but I praise God for my husband. I think I do like to see you fuss. I, I, I think so. I think so. I, yeah, we, we must agree on that. I, I, I like to see you fuss, but just not fuss at me. <laughs> exactly. You like to see me fuss, but not at you. But I praise God because we are in partnership with one another, within leadership with one another. I have to lead and he follows. But neither one of us is um, scared to let go. We're scared to lose each other, yes. but not scared to let go to other leadership. And I praise God for your leadership, Pastor. Continue, continue, continue. Listen, we just wanted to encourage you today to the married couples who are in ministry together. Listen, I'm telling you, if your husband is the head of the household, let him be the head of the household. And don't make him feel, ladies, let's not make our husbands feel as though that they have to agree with our men. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Sometimes your faith has to be stretched, but let God tell you. 
Yes. 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 Yes.